right, we're back. Think Tech. Here we are at the one o'clock rock block. And we're talking about community matters. We're talking with Tom Yamachika, who is the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, a very important institution. We'll talk about that. And the title of our show is The Effects, the Results of the in Tax Terms, the Tax Effects of the 2017 Legislature. It's a short show. I think we're about over. <laughs> well, there's a lot of stuff that happened. <laughs> we can talk about that. Tell us, tell us about the Tax Foundation first. Well, the Tax Foundation is a, uh, a government watchdog agency. We, we try to be uh, there at the legislature monitoring what's going on over there so taxpayers can know what's happening to them before you know, they, they rec receive notice for it with, you know, in, in the new tax forms or whatever. Uh, we, we're, we're there to inform people, especially the legislators, about what uh, the effects are of what they're doing. And your view of it. When I say you, I mean the Tax Foundation. I mean, do you think that Hawaii, traditionally, say, since statehood, has been well run from a tax point of view, a tax and benefit point of view, uh, or not? And if not, uh, what, you know, what is the sea change that may trouble you and what we need to do about it in a conceptual way over time? Well, one of the things that I, I think is very troubling uh, is how we've managed our, our um, uh, government labor, uh, especially in terms of the post-employment benefits and um, you know, what we promise to pay them. Uh, like, for example, if, if you, if you uh, retire after so many years of service, not only do we give you a defined benefit from the employee's retirement system, but we also uh, have a medical plan that basically covers you for life after you after you leave the government um, for medical expenses. Now that's a huge benefit, huge, worth in, in inestimable amounts. Yeah, and which we all have to pay for. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, did anybody think about how much this cost? Did anybody think that um, once you know that that people would get older and that they would get sicker and uh, and the population would increase? I mean, those kinds of, kinds of the things that we uh, are kind of dealing with as we, we, as we now look at the, uh, you know, what's in the plans, how much money there, there is, and how much we need to have in there to fund these, uh, you know, the, the anticipated cost of the benefits when, when these people retire or get sick or whatever. Huge unfunded liability. Huge. Um, un it's unknowable how much it's going to cost us, except it's going to cost us more than most other states. Just that one item. But how do you roll it back? How do you get to a balance? How do you get, you know, to actually have money left in the till to build the state, to build infrastructure, to build new programs, uh, you know, to have the community in general enjoy some of its tax money? Uh well, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of ways to do it, one of which is, is very unpleasant, and that is you start taxing the heck out of more people. Um, at some point... Poor people. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, and at some point, uh, people are going to get fed up, and they're going to vote with their feet. And a lot of people are doing that. We're, we're, we're seeing you know, a net amount of people going out, outside of the state, um, leaving, you know, leaving our fair shores. And uh, you know, probably it's not tax being the only thing that's causing it, but it probably doesn't help. Yeah, well, it's the one that you can't really argue with. I mean, you have to pay. Uh, there was a piece uh, that Kali'i Akina wrote in his uh, weekly blog about this very issue. Um, you know, we thought that, uh, you know, the kids out of Punahou, uh, Iolani, the kids out of, I don't know, any number of schools out of UH, um, leave town. They leave town on a regular basis. We have in, in migration, and our population has increased modestly, but we have a lot of talent leaving town. And, um, you know, we've been talking about that, living with that for several years, maybe, maybe decades. But now this article is a little troubling. It's because the, it's the middle class, the lower middle class, the poor people, they leave town. <laughs> we're, we're losing it at all ends of the spectrum now. <laughs> that, that's true. I mean, the population figures have. Uh, have kind of reversed in, in recent years, and yeah, there's people leaving. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this legislature, because you know, like it or not, the legislature is very powerful, and like it or not, we collectively, the state, rely, we rely on the legislature to do the right thing, and so often our expectations are not met. Going into the two, uh, 2017 legislature this session, 
what were your expectations? I mean, if you had any, I mean, sometimes it's hard to have them because there's not enough information. But did you have expectations? What did you expect would happen? I, I, I didn't know what would happen. I, I know this is not an election year, so uh, in years other than election years, you have uh, big advances being made in the, in the tax policy front. Usually that means there are tax increase proposals. Uh, and we, d we did not get disappointed on that front. There was a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, matter of fact, as of February of this year, uh, there were so many uh, tax proposals circulating in the legislature that it, we, we just almost couldn't keep up with it. That's really interesting because uh, you're differentiating this year uh, against other years and saying that there were more tax proposals, am I right? More tax proposals in 2017 than, yeah, I mean, than earlier years. Yeah, I mean, typically, in the beginning of the year, we put out a digest. Um, and. Uh, uh, usually the digest is seven or eight pages long at, at the beginning of February. This year was 14. Ah, tells us something. Uh, why? I mean, is it, is it something in the weather, the water, sunspots? What is it? Why all of a sudden this year do we have all these, did we have all these proposals for changes and increases in tax in Hawaii? That's, that's a very good question. It seemed like it was popular. Huh? Somebody got the idea and everybody ran with it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, but uh, does it mean, does it reflect the fact that we're in trouble financially and the legislature or the operatives in the legislature felt that they needed to raise money, that's why all the tax changes? Well, like uh, a lot of changes were proposed, not a whole lot got through. Yeah. Lots and lots of things died. Yeah. That, that digest that started off as 14 pages is now three. <laughs> does that mean that, lots that the ones of stuff on the, dropped on by the, the three wayside. pages passed? Well, yeah, the, yeah I, I got three pages of stuff that, that passed the legislature is on its way to the governor. Well, let's talk about some of the bills. The bills sure. that you followed, the bills that you thought were, oh, I don't know, threatening to the taxpayer or that would have some profound effect on the economy or the tax structure. Okay, well, let's, let's start with that one then. You know, there's House Bill 209. Uh, we, we talked about that a little bit earlier offline. And that is basically an individual income tax hike. Okay. And in rates. What, in rates. So remember the... Uh, the 9%, 10%, and 11% tax rates that we thought we got rid of a couple of years ago, they're back. Mm. Effective 1-1-2018, um, oh, those, those rates kick in again, you know, assuming this legislation is approved, uh, to, to do things like um, uh, providing poverty relief programs. Uh, there's something called the Low Income Household Renters Credit. Uh, it increases that. Uh, there's something called the food excise credit, uh, which is for low-income people, and continues and increases that. Uh, we enact the uh, f a federal earned income tax credit, or we have a state analog to it. It's 20% of the federal amount, uh, but ours is non-refundable. So that's in the bill as well, and it's being financed with um, uh, tax increases on the quote-unquote wealthy. So we do have tax increases already this yes. year. That's how serious, how, how large, what, what is the dimension of that tax increase in money uh, for me, for, for us? <laughs> well, uh, the, the, the tax increases kick in at, uh, you know, starting at um, uh, $200,000 for, uh, for marrieds. So $200,000 is the 9%. Uh, three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand for ten percent, and four hundred thousand for eleven percent. So that, and, and, you know, for single, it's half that. For mm -hmm. head of household, it's seventy-five percent of that. Yeah. I remember. I mean, it's not not hard to have this memory that Hawaii's income tax is one of the highest in the country. Um, yeah, so when this we, makes when it we, higher still. When we initially enacted the, um, uh, you know, those rates back in two thousand nine, you know, right after the recession, uh, we were the top of the country. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, you know, California felt that it didn't need to be, didn't want to be outdone, so <laughs> they beat us. Oh, a little competition. <laughs> yeah, a little competition there. And, and, and I think also either um, uh, Taxachusetts or Connecticut or New Jersey, one of those. Yeah. Uh, but they don't have uh, a, a draconian gross excise tax like we do. No, they don't. And, and that's totally, may I say it again, totally regressive. <laughs> it hits the little people on the head, and they don't realize it. <laughs> well, it, it's funny you should say that because because this bill 
uh, 209 is supposed to be the antidote to that. It's supposed to make our tr tax structure more progressive. Well, uh, I suppose, well, we didn't get an increase, or rather an extension of the gross excise surcharge, but we still have the gross excise surcharge for a while, and we still pay this, you know, high gross excise rate to, for everything. I mean, you can go to most other states, and there are exec exceptions and exemptions um, that, you, that don't apply. You go to Oregon, and I love it. You go to Oregon, and you buy something, you know, in a cash register in a store, and, and it's the exact price that's on the label. There's no tax. How about that? And it's like, wow, having a, having a shower and feeling good <laughs> because you don't have to pay any gross excise at all in, in Oregon. Well, it's very easy to bake, bake it into the price, so. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, it really doesn't matter that much. So how, so how did we come out? I mean, the citizen of Hawaii is going to pay more tax next year. Again, yeah, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. So uh, I guess, um, you know, I, I wonder if, if there's a concomitant increase in benefits for business that came along at the same, that maybe a reduction for taxes on business, some kind of incentives to uh, incentivize young people to go into business, anything like that come along this session? Oh, well, there were, there were a lot of credits proposed, none of which, uh, none of which uh, passed. Yeah. So in a conceptual way. Except, you, except the movie credit. Ah. We extended the movie credit for another five years. Yeah, that's peanuts. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is that, you know, they're taking more money. I don't know how they're going to spend it. I could ask you that next. But they're not really giving us the kind of support we need to develop an economy that will generate the tax. So it's squeezing the lemon. And it's what you said before. It's like without consideration of the effects of these changes. Yeah, I, I've, I've maintained for a very long time that what we should be thinking of, you know, top of mind is, hey, tax is not something that people just cough up. You know, there's an engine that produces the tax, and the engine is business, business and commerce. You have to take care of the engine so it can spin, 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 and throw off all this tax. Yeah. They're connected. <laughs> Yes. Business and tax are connected because you can't pay tax if you don't have business gener generating income. What about that really strange idea that somebody had, and this somehow relates to what we're talking about, for the 12.5% against the tourists? I, I thought that was very interesting, you know. We don't want to pay it. Let those guys pay it. Squeeze that lemon instead. <laughs> what what did you think of that on, on a tax policy basis? Uh, uh, I, was, I was very surprised when, when I heard uh, that discussion come up, you know, using TAT as a way to pay, uh, pay the rail tax. But, you know, there were actually some, uh, some good reasons behind it. You know, n number one being, okay, you know, Mr. Mayor had said, well, let's use the GE tax as opposed to property tax because we export, um, uh, you know, a third of GE tax. You know, it's, it's a contention with which we disagree a little bit, but but uh, the logical conclusion of that is okay, fine. You know, well, let's let's uh, uh, hoist the the TAT, and even more of that gets exported. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Number two, um, that rail project needs money now, not ten years in the future. So, if you extend if you extend the surcharge, you only get money ten years in the future. What about you know? What about all these overages and stuff that you that you're Dealing with now, we're going to be billions. Be we are already billions behind in that project. Oh yes. Yeah. So so you need money now to, to help with it as as opposed to in ten years, and mm -hmm. TAT produ would produce the money now. Yeah. So yeah, so there were some good reasons. Behind what about what about the? I mean, uh, I don't have any data on this, but what about the effect on tourists? What about the effect on tourism? Would they know the difference? I think somebody was assuming, you know, in structuring that they wouldn't even know the difference. That is painless. You know, you go to another city and they charge you a big sales tax or sales tax. You don't know. You think, well, I got, I got to pay it. That's the way it is here. I just accept it as kind of a Zen basis. Was this tourists yeah. accepted on a Zen basis? I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I mean, people were thinking, oh, well, you know, 12 12 percent is what tourists pay uh, in in many other parts of the country. Uh, what I am not sure they were thinking of, though, is uh, we add GET on top of that too. So. So it's not only the 12%, uh, but also the 4.16 or the 4.5. So, so the tourists are looking at 16%, you know, off the top. You know, when you say things like that, I, I get a splitting headache. 
And when I get a splitting headache, I feel I need to take a break. So, Tom, is it okay? Do we take a break for a minute now? Let's take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Okay, we're talking about the, something that is, is, is just as sure as death, taxes. <laughs> we're, talk, we're talking with Tom Yamachika, who's the president of the Hawaii Tax Foundation, Tax Foundation of Hawaii. And he's our watchdog. He's our advocate, in a way, uh, trying to keep it all rational when people consider sometimes cockamamie bills for tax increases. And he goes down and testifies, takes positions. And a question I put to him during the break was, is there anybody else that does this? Because we need you. You are very important to us. Well, uh, typically the, the 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 tax department is down there testifying on tax bills. Do they don't. Do they address policy? Do they address the effects on the public and on the economy? Do they address those things? Well, sometimes, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's it's tough to rely on them, especially when it's their bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, and a lot of times they, uh, you know, they put forward bills that would. You know, restrict taxpayer rights because yeah, they want the job to be easier. Sure, you yeah. won't be able to collect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. Well, um, let's talk about the bills that didn't make it, uh, and, and that'll give that us didn't. a flavor of how this, you know, the sort of the uh, the persona of this session. Okay, so um, in no special order, uh, here are some of the bills that didn't make it. Uh, there was a proposed tax on electronic smoking devices. They wanted to put the tobacco tax on that. That that died. Um, there were uh, uh, bills That sounds to like it was a good bill. <laughs> well, we, we, okay. it died. It died. Uh, there was the uh, proposal to uh, put a surcharge on real property tax to fund education. So there was a constitutional amendment as well as the implementing legislation. Uh, both of those went through conference committee but, but got shot down at the last minute. Uh, there was a bill oh, to... I take it you opposed that. Uh, we, we don't take positions, we just comment. Okay. Okay, I mean, you know, we're a 501c3, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, there was a bill to expand the solar credit uh, to include uh, battery backup systems. That got pretty far, but again, uh, conferees couldn't come to an agreement, that died. That's really too bad, that one. We, you know, we studied that one in, a, in, a, in the capacity of an energy bill. And it was really regrettable that we don't have that yet because we need to have solar in the state, or rather batteries covered, you know, by this incentive. And uh, batteries are expensive, and batteries people are, are not expensive. inclined to buy them unless they have some nod from the state government. So yeah, and I mean, certainly, you know, batteries with the solar system, uh, if you, I mean, that would probably qualify under the existing credit. But if you have an existing system and you want to add batteries to it, yeah. then but what's the difference? Yes, yeah. batteries, and it's a solar system, and you can't use them except with a solar system. So oh, you can use them. You can use them independently. Yeah. Yeah. In, I mean, in connection like, with your your home. Yeah, you can you can connect them to, uh, you know, the existing grid, and the, and if the grid goes down, then you can. Oh, I suppose so. It's an emergency. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was looking at those myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, then then you have. Um, uh, ways to fund the highway fund. So the transportation department wanted to hit us with uh, a fuel tax increases, uh, vehicle weight tax, uh, vehicle registration. Uh, somebody wanted to change that into a, a tax on value of the car, uh, sometimes called an ad, an ad valorem tax. Um, that would be <clears throat> the opposite of regressive, eh? <laughs> you have a big expensive car, you pay more. Or, or a big truck. Hmm. Well. Yeah, that could be used in business, and so it should be agnostic. Well, uh, 
but I think it would have a disproportionate impact on the on the trucks, really. Yeah. Because um, they, you but, get but more the, But the idea, the I think, behind that one was uh, that you can deduct personal property tax on your federal income tax return. So you, you can kind of like shift part of that one over to the feds. Mm. Uh, but, the, but the trouble was, you know, none of the counties had any um, uh, any solution for implementing this type of tax. I mean, it would, it would be uh, tough to set up and have to hire a lot of people. And their and their computer systems, I think, are, are written in COBOL. So, yeah. So yeah. It, it it. I'm sorry, Tom. I, I don't know what COBOL. Did. I'm only kidding. That's really an old language, and it, it goes back to Neil Abercrombie's, uh, you know, promise to us that we were going to have a new computer system all around the state. We don't have, we don't have that. Yeah, well, they're they're building it now. Mm, I mean, okay. parts of it are active at the department. Okay. Of taxation. I'm I'm hoping. Yeah. yeah. But then, of course, the city governments are, you know, independent and and they have to deal with their own technology. But this problems. goes to the whole thing about not having enough money in the till to do things to keep current to keep up. You know, I mean, uh, the, the big risk for an isolated state like ours is that we'll fall behind. We'll become irrelevant in the 21st century. And if we can't keep up with this kind of thing, with government technology and with the technology of business, um, we will fall behind. And that need, that requires money. So I think, you know, part of the sad, sad sack experience that went down in this legislature, as in earlier legislatures, is they were seeking money to do uh, I, at least from a conceptual point of view, to, to keep up, but they didn't get the money, and then now they're not going to be able to keep up. Well, one of the problems was that the uh, the revenue forecast kept kept going down, right? I mean, it started off uh, at, at a the certain amount. The Council on Revenues Yeah, the Council that. on Revenues knocked it down by $150 million at the beginning of the session, yeah. and then knocked it down by another $250 million. Uh, so uh, lawmakers were scrambling to get behind that because they had to balance the budget with that with that number yeah. under the under our constitution. Yeah. Well, so uh, why why I mean I just heard you know we have all kinds of room rate increases we have more tourists there's, there's nothing happening in Hawaii that suggests that our economy I mean you wonder about it but nothing suggests our economy is failing right now oh, no, right no, no. now. The the um, problem that was cited in that in that first. A drop, you know, the $150 million uh, reduction, was that they weren't getting enough, or they, they weren't getting as as much as they thought they were going to get out of the construction industry, because um, uh, there was a lot of construction activity. There still is. It's really, really hot, and I guess they were expecting a lot of tax revenues that didn't that didn't materialize. Uh, and um, you know, when you when you kind of uh, think about you know the stories that you, you read about the Department of Labor going down uh, to to kind of crack down on the uh, uh, contractors that that, that 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 were paying these workers as independent contractors illegally and not not holding you know, withholding payroll taxes and not doing uh, unemployment contributions and so forth. Um, and bring them in from the mainland on this sort of catch-all kind of technique. Yeah. Right, and then you know they they come and they go and and and. You know, the proper tax isn't paid. Yeah. So that, okay, that, that I, probably had part, you know, something to do with that. Well, you know, but you know what, what, what you say um, suggests, and I and I guess I knew this uh, is that the Council on Revenues comes up with a number that is a projection. It's um, it may be fiction. It may be right. It may be wrong. Sometimes it is wrong, and that's the number that the legislature has to use under the constitutional provision that, that requires it to balance the budget every year. Right. Sometimes that number is wrong, too high, too low, what have you. Well, it's, it's, it's probably a, a better guess than, than you or I could make. Oh, sure. Are you on the Council of Revenues? No, no. Could you be, or you would, would have some conflict of my, some kind? Uh, my predecessor was on it. Was that right? Lowell Kalapa. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, it's an important organization because it, you know, it dictates um, you know, the, the scope of funding from the legislature. What other bills uh, do you think we should mention today? Um, so th there were there were um, bills to. I'm sure you heard of the Airbnb bill. Mm. There, there was a, it was a bill to withhold uh, tax on vacation rentals. Uh, that was passed last year, vetoed last year, came up again this year, and this and this year it didn't even pass uh, pass the legislature. And the and the uh, the party introducing it was Airbnb, right? That's correct. That's really interesting. They, they want to avoid a problem at another level. They want to avoid, this is a sort of fight fire with fire thing. Yeah. Perhaps. Uh, but I mean, it made, it made uh, a lot of sense for them to be withholding and remitting 
you know, taxed to the state. From, a, from a, an efficiency point of view. Yeah, yeah because, point of view. because, because, because the they cities, collect the money anyway. The, the cities don't, the counties do not have a way to do this and it would put a strain on their administrative resources. Well, no, it's, it's the counties the ones who, who are opposing it because they have the land use regulations that were apparently being violated and, and their remedy is to shut, uh, shut the rentals down. Right, so this is Airbnb's way of, you know, sort of a backdoor approach to increase the number of rentals that Airbnb can do. Yeah. Or at least making sure that the ones that they have are more legitimate. Yeah, yeah. So that failed. That failed. So now, okay, we'll talk about the, the two-year cycle in a little while. Yeah. Anything and else? And then um, yeah. real estate investment trusts. There was a... Oh, that's a Mike Fergus bill. The, yeah. There was a, a bill, and it's been considered for a number of years now to um, increase or, or make sure that uh, real estate investment trusts who own property in Hawaii and are doing business in Hawaii are paying income tax because uh, typically uh, a real estate investment trust doesn't pay income tax, it's but its shareholders do. Yeah. So, I mean, that seems fair to me. Um, and I've talked to Mike Ferguson. In fact, we had a program back a couple of years ago where he was talking about his favorite bill, which he's been advocating for a couple of years. Uh, he doesn't feel it's fair that uh, these REITs come in and uh, Hawaii doesn't get any income tax from them because it's all a federal pass-through and therefore by reference a state pass-through. Result is that um, the shareholders pay somewhere else, but Hawaii doesn't see any income tax at all from these enormous REITs with enormous revenues. Yeah, uh, they, they do pay a GET on the rental income that they get. They do pay property tax, but they don't pay income tax. Yeah, so they get a break. I mean, if you they were a, a Hawaii resident or even a Hawaii well, if you're it, a Hawaii it, developer, you got to pay all three. You got to pay all those things. It yeah. seems unfair. It's, it's a discrimination in favor of the offshore. And this is what you know. I, I consider this a matter of a matter of managing offshore investment. If they're going to come here, you want to manage them so they don't take advantage of the loopholes. Uh, it seems to me that Mike Fergus is right. But maybe next year it'll come back. Maybe next year it'll come back. And speaking of next year, let's talk about next year. I mean, this was a very mm, interesting, and I mean that in the Chinese sense. Um, legislature because it was people were thrown out of office left and right and there were arguments between one side and the other that had nothing to do with policy nothing to do with the merits of the bill and yet they were hoo-hoo at each other and you know so bills failed for that reason and, and this has happened before it's not a good statement of the way things work yeah so, there was certainly a lot of high drama this year yeah uh, it, it kind of started off early in the year when, when the house uh, uh, dumped uh, uh, Angus McKelvey who was head of uh, Consumer Protection in the middle of the hearing, committee. in a recess in the hearing, that was really interesting. Yeah, very much. <laughs> so, so some people shifted around. Uh, so uh, Roy Takumi became head of CPC. Um, uh, Justin Woodson, who was head, uh, head of higher education, filled Takumi's slot, and then McKelvey went to to fill Justin Woodson's slot. So, make for good policy. Uh, I don't know. It, it it certainly changed things around, uh, and then. Uh, we just found out uh, that um, uh, Jill Takuda, uh, head of the Ways and the Means Committee, and, and it's a very Senate, important position, and very tax. very important committee, and budget, uh, yeah, yeah, and then she got deposed. Um, seemed seemed to be a very bitter fight, and re and replaced with uh, Donovan De La Cruz. Uh, so he'll be the uh, Ways and Means Chair going into next year, and then of course uh, uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Joe Suki. Uh, he was kind of forced into retirement and uh, replaced with Scott Psyche, who, is, uh, who was the a majority leader. A lot of drama. And a lot of high the, drama. the public doesn't know all the drama, I'm sure, that is under the surface. Uh, and unfortunately, I, I think that does affect the result of the legislature. You know, it, the drama happened mostly recently, in recent weeks, um, but it reflects a, a tone and tenor that may, be, that may have affected these bills as they were going through the pipeline earlier than this kind of drama hit the newspaper. Yeah, certainly um, uh, one of the things that keeps the legislature together is the members coalescing behind their, their yeah, committee chairs. it's part of the process. Yeah. And, and so it's the committee chair who has kind of like the, uh, the, the uh, ability or the duty to, to you know, collect their members' viewpoints and, 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 and come up with some decision that, that, that reflects the collective viewpoint. Uh, and then you know the members can go behind the the, the committee chair and uh, in in the subsequent policy discussion. But uh, uh, apparently uh, something didn't connect this time. Yeah, 
Well, it's happened before, and, and, but this and, is the worst that I can remember. Yeah, and, and you actually had, uh, like, there, there were negotiations that had took place on the conference draft of the rail bill. Um, the, uh, the Senate body basically rejected those and put their own draft in, uh, despite having a, uh, you know, a, a broker deal that happened, I think, Monday night. Um, and then, you know, Tuesday happens and it's all gone. Yeah. It's not, it's not uh, the sound of um, a functional, properly functional organization. Uh, and the question I put to you is, uh, what does this uh, signify for next year? We, we had a bust this year, I would say, uh, and not only in the bills uh, that affect tax, but in a lot of other bills, including social safety net bills and energy bills. So, um, what do you, how does this affect, what do you think is going to happen next year? What should we be looking for next year? Well, what we should, what we should look, be looking for is, a, you know, perhaps a reorganization of the legislature. Um, I mean, you, you see it every election year because you have new members. They uh, they have to get together and, and figure out who the who their leadership is going to be, um, and and supposedly that organization should hold through the biennium, right? The the two year period that the legislature is in session, but. Um, uh, apparently, the organization broke down this year for whatever reason. Yeah. So we only have one minute left, Tom, and I'd like you to uh, take a look at camera one over there. That's the one that's looking at you. And imagine that there's a lot of people out there who would like to hear what you have to say about what they should be doing or not uh, in the period between now um, and next session. What, what should the public think about? What should the public do with regard to tax changes? Well, I, I really do think there should be some you know, thought and discussion about you know, what our policy is going to be, how we're going to take care of the economic engine that, uh, that runs our state um, once we properly consider the, you know, where our money is coming from, uh, then we'll probably be in a better position to make wise decisions about what to do with that. Amen to that. Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, talking today about the tax effects of the 2017 legislature. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay.